Hello everyone. Today I'm going to explain the initial location module. But first something else. Uh, normally this is the regular cascade interface. And even though it's quite nice, uh, I consider the layout not that optimal. So I changed it around a little bit. I'm going to move the curve editor next to the emitters. There. Then I'm going to move the viewport on top of it. There. And then move the curve editor actually next to the viewport though I might change that back to the mirror actually let's do that here yeah. uh, this way you still have a nice overview of all the modules you have a better bigger view of your emitter and the detail panel is much clearer to view all the things less scrolling and that kind of stuff so that might actually be quite interesting to use it like this and if your um, modules aren't as long as these ones, then you can just obviously scroll it down a little bit. There. And in my opinion, this is way better view. Okay, that's it. Let's actually move to the project itself. And that's over here. There we go. The initial location module. Uh, actually, let's move the curve editor down here as well for this one. Okay. Uh, initial location module is actually quite easy to understand. I'm actually gonna give it a bit of velocity first so you can understand it better. Let's add some initial velocity. And add some values here. Minus 10, minus 10, and minus 100. No, actually, let's do. 50. As you can see, the initial location of this emitter is always at this point. Uh, let's see if I can actually enable the grid lines. There we go. It's always exactly on this spot. So to change that, you actually use the initial location module. And if I only change, if I actually use a constant and change this to 100, it will only emit it from x100, y0, z0 and if I add 100 to the y then obviously it spawns over there if I add 100 to the z it also moves upwards as you can see it's flying now and that's basically the whole gist of this uh, let's go back to initial location and change to uh, uniform that way you have a minimum and a maximum amount so let's say the maximum amount will be 100. Now between 0 on the x-axis and 100 on the x-axis, the particles will be emitted. And you can definitely see that clearly going on here. Now if I change the minimum to mi minus 100, it will start emitting between plus 100 and minus 100 on the x-axis. So same with the y-axis and the z-axis. And let's keep Z at 0, and now it's emitting within a square of 100, 100, etc, etc. And, yeah. I think that explains most of the parts you will definitely use a lot, but there's one little thing that I want to explain. Distribute over endpoints. And let's change the values a little bit, so it's easier to see. Okay. At the moment, the particles spawn randomly between 0 and 100 on the x-axis. But with the endpoints distribution, you can change that. Okay, set the distribution points to, let's say, 5. And it's still randomly spawning. And if I set the distribute threshold to 100, actually 1 should be enough. Yeah. Then it's only spawning at 5 points. Uh, let's change it to true. Let's clearly see. Okay, there are only two points where it now emits, the begin and the end, as you can see. And this can actually be quite handy. So let's say you have a row of five um, uh, torches, and you want to make sure that those all have an emitter. This way you can actually use one emitter and place fires on top of each of the five torches. So let's make it a bit more clear. Uh, let's say 500 here. Now on each of the points, 100, 100, 100, 100, particles get emitted. 
and you can actually change that of course uh, let's say I want 10 points to be emitted or only one that might actually not work no, I guess so so yeah that's actually quite an interesting thing that not many people seem to be using uh, let's explain something else if you change the threshold then things will change um, if you set it to uh, 0.5 50% of the particles will be spawned randomly between 0 and 500. The other 50% will be emitted exactly on those endpoints. So if I change it to 0.75, 75% uh, of the particles will be emitted on top of those endpoints. At 0, 0, 0 and at 500, 0, 0. So, and 25% of those will be emitted randomly. If I do 0.25, 75% of the particles will be emitted randomly between the minimum and maximum values you put in the distribution and 25% will actually only emit on those endpoints. Putting the distribution treasure to zero will actually ignore the distribution over endpoints input so it will just be randomly emitting them. This can actually be quite handy for a lot of things. Like I said, you can actually make use only one emitter for five torches. So I want five points and I want them to be very accurate. And obviously you'll need to spawn a little bit more to make sure that it works uh, properly. But in this case, you will only have one draw call for f the flames for five torches. And this can be quite optimal. It's not always the best way to go because it needs a lot of pre pre preparation and it's not really that modular. But if every draw call counts then this is a good way to go and yeah that kind of explains everything you need to know about the initial location module and that's it close out take care